And joining us from Austin is former Texas Governor Rick Perry. Governor Perry, I want to ask you, you said that Donald Trump was a cancer on conservatism, and you also said that he threatens to send the Republican Party into the graveyard. What did you mean by those? Well, I want to be very clear that uh, I'm not going to go quietly uh, as any individual, whether it's Donald Trump or anyone else, uh, lays out concepts that frankly are uh, out of line with the uh, old historical uh, conservatism. I happen to think that conservatism is the future of this country, allowing people to uh, live free from overtaxation, over litigation, over regulation. And, and that's what we need to be talking about in this country and, and, and not be trying to divide this country. Conservatism is about bringing people together. Uh, finding solutions to challenges that face us. And I hear Mr. Trump uh, with some rather inflammatory remarks and, you know, I, whether or not you agree with <clears throat> John McCain or not, his politics, uh, you must uh, not say that he's not a hero and that uh, those that are captured somehow or another uh, to belittle those. And at that particular point in time, I'm not going to be quiet about uh, uh, an individual who's running on the Republican ticket that is saying that they're a conservative but not espousing conservative views. So in, the, in the, that instance when he was talking about John McCain and some of the other things he's he said, I know they're distasteful, but I guess what I wonder is how they harm the conservative message. Well, I think anytime you have someone who is going to ask to be the commander in chief of the military, and to cast dispersion upon those individuals, how in the world is that individual going to have the, uh, the respect of the men and women that they're going to ask to go into harm's way? So uh, I think that that is the type of, of, of rhetoric. We've had a divider in the White House for the last six and a half years uh, in, in Barack Obama. Uh, we don't need that out of the Republican uh, nominee, and we certainly don't need a, a Republican divider in chief. When I talk to Republican voters who have good things to say about Mr. Trump, they say he's just telling it like it is. And they, they like the, his kind of, uh, that he doesn't hold back. Uh, what do you say to those voters? Well, he's obviously talking about uh, border security and we've been dealing with that for the last five or six years. It's not something new to us. We understand uh, that that is a real concern for Americans, whether or not they're Republicans or Democrats. I think in a lot of cases, uh, care about the security of this country. Uh, but just throwing invectives out there and throwing up ideas that frankly don't hold water is not what Americans are looking for. We need a, a, a serious, mature conversation about solutions on how to deal with that border. And I know how to do that. Uh, last summer when the president came to Dallas and I looked him in the face and I said, Mr. President, if you don't secure the border, Texas will. Uh, and, you know, Mr. Trump, uh, he, he took offense that, uh, uh, and said that Texas hadn't done its job and that we'd failed on border security. The real issue here is that Donald Trump obviously doesn't either recognize or, or know that border security is the federal government's responsibility. It's not the state's responsibility, but when the state fails, I'm going to step into and try to protect my citizens as best I can, and in doing so, protecting the rest of this country. And we had a very successful effort last year, a 74 percent decrease in apprehensions after we sent our National Guard, our Texas Ranger recon teams, and our Parks and Wildlife Warden. So the, the, this, is, this conversation needs to be about solutions. It doesn't need to be about well, casting aspersions at, at, uh, at people.